G'day, audio files. This is the Sirens of Audio, the Doctor Who podcast devoted to the audio medium, or Doctor Who in the audio medium, and all the universes that uh, come from that world. My name is Dwayne. I'm your host, and joining me is Philip. G'day, Philip. G'day, Dwayne. How are you going? Yeah, good. Our listeners can't see you there, but you're looking really relaxed. You've had a you've had a good time over the holidays. Well, those of us in Australia, basically the whole country shuts down from the 24th of December until the 27th of January. So we're part of that month where life is just slow and easy. Those people who have to go to work don't do much while they're in there, but it really is just a slow time. And yeah, I've just spent a couple of days away with some of the some of my family. The big ones stayed away, but um, yeah, it's very relaxed, very casual. Life is good. Summer's here. It's beautiful. That's good. That's good. We're going to get straight into the main topic of our episode in a moment. But before we do, I'm not going to jump right deep into a rabbit hole, but I want to talk briefly about the fact that we've just recently had some new Doctor Who on TV. Uh, The announcement is that we're going to have a shortened season of Doctor Who later in the year. Um, For those fans who are desperate for new Doctor Who, um, I just want to talk about, and particularly those who haven't yet delved into the worlds of Big Finish and Doctor Who on audio in the audio medium, um, just some of the uh, perhaps suggestions they that that they would need to to get into it. So I might start off, Philip, so you can you can get where I'm headed with this. I, I've seen people steer clear of Big Finish audio for a couple of reasons. First of all. Uh, some people I've spoken to uh, sort of can't get into it because they <clears throat> because they can't concentrate on the story and it just goes over their head. So for those people, I would suggest that they're trying to listen to an audio like they might listen to a CD of music. So a CD of music is something that you can put on in the background. You don't need to concentrate on it. What you need to do with audio is you need to treat it like it's the TV program. You need to stop. You need to listen. You need to concentrate. Use all your senses. In some ways, even more, because you're not getting fed that visual stimulus that you get on the TV. You have to create the visuals in your own head. So it does take a bit of work. But because of the quality of stories, now you look at. We're going to talk about Big Finish in 2020. There is a heck of a lot of output in 2020. Um, so and Big Finish have been doing that for over 20 years now. If you haven't yet started, uh, this is going to be the year to start, particularly if you're a fan of the new series with things like Chris Eccleston's uh, first box set coming out. Uh, More Tom Baker is is out. Uh, The Eighth Doctor is still going strong and lots of other things happening in the spin-off world as well. There's lots and lots of things you get into. You've just got to be prepared to put in that effort and not treat it like a CD going in the background. What do you think of that, Philip? Well, I think that's definitely right. I think the skill is, and I, I think part of the issue is more and more people are used to, I think there's a term called two screening. So even when the TV's on now and, and TV shows are being written with recognition of the fact that people are two screening. So while the television's on, they've got their phones out, they're doing something else at the same time. And in some ways, I think we're seeing a lot of TV shows dumbing down more and more because of it. And so you don't need to focus that much on what's going on the, on one screen because you've got another screen to occupy you as well. With audio, because the story matters, the dialogue matters, you have to pay a bit more attention. And some people struggle with that. It's, it's not a skill all people have. It's been lost a bit. Um, I, I find I, I t- tend to like to do it when I'm doing something else. So for me, big finish is when I'm walking, when I'm in the car. So it's not that I have, you, know, you don't have to put all your concentration into the audio. But if there's something else that I can do at the same time, which is just habit. Menial. Is, yeah, menial. menial. That actually helps me focus more on the story that's happening. So, yeah. So, for me, it's, you know, it's in the car. It's while I'm walking. It's, but, yeah, otherwise I do need to sit and concentrate. I can't, I can't text at the same time as listen to a big finish because you just miss too much and then think, well, what's happened? So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 it's a different skill, but the rewards are so much better because the sets are better. The, <laughs> the special effects are better. The stunts look better. Um, and, and you get immersed more. The actors never age. No, <laughs> no they, they don't. And, and, and that's, that's part of the, the, the beauty of the, of the audio medium. 
It, it, it's, its richness is there. And it requires better stories and better dialogue. So TV shows and even the Doctor Who show can, can sometimes get away with not so good characterizations or dialogue because you have all the visuals to distract you. The audio medium can't do that. It, the, the writers can't be slack with storyline. It gets picked up. And there's too many finicky people saying, hey, well, that doesn't make sense. Or if the dialogue doesn't keep you engaged or explain properly what's going on, you can't follow it. So I think the writers have to work harder, and they do. They, they usually lift really well. As, as, yeah, as we're going to discuss when we look at, back at 2020, um, it's an amazing selection of stories and people, yeah, great stories and adventures. Yes, the other problem that I think some fans face, particularly fans who are just toying with the idea of getting into Big Finish now, is that you, like, you and I, Philip, we've been fans for a long time, and I think we both have a, a similar affliction in that we like to be completists. So if we start something, we like to get into all of it. We like to have all of it. And I think for Big Finish, who's producing output, and I think you've got a spreadsheet here where Big Finish released almost 100 pieces of uh, uh, of new fiction last year. Um, for someone new coming in, I think for me, if that was me putting myself in their shoes, I would feel overwhelmed with that. And rather than try something here and there and, and, and sort of risk that feeling that I'm missing out on the whole story, I won't look at it at all. And uh, which is, I think, one of the reasons Big Finish might be finishing up the monthlies. Uh, the monthly range has been going for a long time, uh, finishing in, in 21, in March of this year. And it's it's something that I've heard many times from fans who've heard maybe a few of the earlier ones, but they sort of haven't kept up and they sort of would like to dip back in. But where do they start? What, how, do, how, do they, how do they choose what to listen to? Um, so I suspect, this is just a theory of mine, that 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 Big Finish will perhaps even with the monthlies be rebranding some of the eras of uh, of Doctor Who that they've had in the monthly range, like a Sixth Doctor and Perry or a Sixth Doctor and Mel. They might box that up into a package and that is something that a new fan could delve into and have the complete package of that particular era rather than have this 275 monthly releases. I've got to listen to all of them. I can't cope if I don't. I think that's where they're going to have to uh, go and repackage uh, what they've already got there. But of course, the new stuff is coming out all the time as well. So do you think that might be a problem for newbies coming along? I think it does freak people out. It, but it's the same as the show, though. What happens to people who've only discovered the show in the last couple of years and you have 50 years, more than 50 years of material to go back and look at and work out where to go? So first thing I'd say is go onto our Facebook page and ask us where should they start and we'll give you some ideas. Um, but also, I mean, I, I, on a, one of the other chat groups on Facebook, someone asked about Tom Baker, where should they start? And I was able to say a couple of things in terms of, well, pick your favorite companion. Um, you know, if you don't know where to start, pick a companion and go, and go there. And, and in fact, you know, with, with Tom Baker, I said, you know, the Mary Tam season, the one that she did before she passed away, the entire season is brilliant. So you could start there. I love all the leader ones. So I, that would be my, my next choice. But I also pointed out that if you're planning to listen to the David Tennant series coming up later in the year with um, the, the Special Security Forces. Um, oh, Dalek we'll Universe, yeah. Dalek Universe. We'll start with, the, start with the new companion that Jane Slavin plays because that character is going to be the, the main character in the Dalek Universe. So go back, start with that season of Tom Baker, get to know that character so that we're later on we go to David Tennant. So there's, there's ways of stepping in Lots of ways to be in. So you just ask ask people who've been around. There's you know, our page. There's other pages. Um, people can give you ideas and tips about where to start and where to dip in. And that's that's yeah. You know, use other people's advice and yeah. You know, give. But the other thing, you just don't care. It doesn't matter. Dip in anyway. It's all it's all good. <laughs> doesn't matter where you start. Okay. Well, that was our little five minute uh, interlude that turned into I don't know how many minutes there, Philip. Maybe fifteen. But this is. The Sirens of Audio Big Finish 2020 Awards. And we're going to go through month by month the releases and the ones that stood out to us or the ones that are still in our minds that we want to say a few things about, we're going to talk about. So I think we should just get straight into it, Philip, and start with January 2020. Back before COVID or before we knew it was happening, 
Oh, it was a different world back then, wasn't it? It wasn't. Um, here, here are some of the releases uh, for, for January 2020. We had uh, an audio book, a Benny audio book written by Dave Stone, The Infernal Nexus. Now, um, you had a plan to, uh, now that uh, the early Bennies have been released on download, you're going to go back and start uh, popping those books into your, your Bennies, aren't you? That's right. I do actually own all the books. So I do have the book, The Infernal Nexus, and I have read it. <laughs> many years ago. So yeah, I, I had a plan that when a few of the audiobooks had come out and a few more had come out, I was going to start listing from the very beginning of Benny, listing through all her audios and putting the books in the right spot. Because early on, those books were fairly vital in in terms of the key. You know, the, the Time Lord Victorious at the moment is happening with you know, multimedia. Big Finish was doing it 20 years ago. And their books, and their short stories and their audios all combined together to tell one long story of Benny. So, yeah, so the Infernal Nexus is part of that. And, yep, I'm going to get, eventually, when I get some time, I'm going to listen through the entire Benny range with all the books at the same time. Very good. Okay, another release for the Diary of River Song, Volume 7. Uh, four stories in there. Um, uh, always, always good to listen to, uh, to, to River Song. I haven't come across a clanger yet in, in that whole series. We've got uh, Volume 8 coming out this month. But uh, series seven came out, and I think you'd probably agree with me there that they're all they're all pretty good, wouldn't you? Yes, great fun, great dialogue, <laughs> always worth a listen. All right, so uh, a, a Torchwood Monthly came out called Fortitude, written by James Goss, who is also we mentioned we mentioned Time Lord Victorious before, and uh, he's uh, he's very involved with that. The uh, virtually the showrunner for Time Lord Victorious. Uh, an interesting box set came out um, called The Sins of Captain John. Now. You've probably heard that, uh, Philip, but I haven't because that was a character that never really appealed to me from Torchwood. So like uh, like we were saying before, if it's not something that you're overly interested in, you don't have to dip into it. But it was uh, directed by Scott Hancock uh, and usually anything Scott talks to, usually anything Scott touches turns to gold. Would you agree with that series? Yeah, I would. I mean, Captain John, I did actually like the character. I'm a, I'm a big Buffy fan. And so when they brought the actor from Buffy, and I can't think of his name at the moment. Is it James Masters? Yes, thank you. James Masters, who was, who, um, was Spike on Buffy, uh, and then into Angel. When they we brought him into Torchwood at the end of the second season, I thought it was a really great choice. And he actually played the character very well. And he and John Barrowman do spark off each other very well. So there's, there's a couple of episodes in there with John Barrowman as well. But yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a very fun series. There's actually a number of Torchwood series this year and um, all slightly off the wall. I think Torchwood is letting them explore in different ways. So Torchwood Soho we've had, and there's another Torchwood one as well. It really is letting the writers write in a way that they can't for Doctor Who. They've got more freedom and flexibility and also a lot more character-driven in some ways because these are characters they can play around with and have more faults. In fact, you know, Captain John, Captain John, you can't get more folks than what he has. But yeah, definitely worth a listen. Uh, so we for the monthly release for January 2020, we had the Guy Adams story, Dark Universe, which was a prequel to Doom Coalition. So the very first episode of Doom Coalition, the eighth Doctor box set series that ran over 16 episodes, featured a new character played by Mark Bonner called The Eleven, which is one of my favourite new invented newly invented characters for big finish specifically uh the 11 a, a, a time lord with uh multiple personality disorder because whenever he regenerates he retains the previous regeneration as well they're all in his head um a fascinating concept and it was uh, great to get this particular uh prequel kind of tied in a little bit with um sophie aldred's novel that was released a few a few months earlier called At Childhood's End. I think she was an, an adult ace that the Doctor picked up for this adventure. So uh, that was very good. Um, probably my, my my disappointment for the month of January was probably the fourth Doctor uh, sets. Um, the production was fantastic, uh, but the stories just didn't do it for me, particularly the opening one, uh, which was Purgatory 12. Uh, I, I love Mark Platt and 
but I don't love everything he does. And this was an example of, uh, of one of those. I don't think it, it really worked. It was great to hear Matthew Waterhouse. So I was excited about this. Um, I was just a little bit let down by the stories. Not much, but a little bit. Um, Chase the Night was a great story. I know, I know you and I have had some discussions about Chase the Night and the, uh, uh, the plausibility of uh, some of the scientific aspects of that story, but I still love it anyway. Um, I, the Chase the Night was a, yeah, it was a high tension um, bottleneck show, which I, yeah, I, I, like, I liked a lot of the concepts. Yeah, I mean, the science, I don't understand why the tracks didn't burn up, but aside <laughs> from that. Oh, stop saying that. <laughs> Just go with it, Philip. Just go with it. All right. Um, next release that I can see on my list here is Adam Adamant Lives. Now, this was an exciting one too, because I, I think prior to this release, I hadn't I had the DVDs for ages, but I've never really watched Adam Adamant. So before this came out, I started watching it, and it's a, actually a really good series. I don't know if this was the one that Verity Lambert went to straight after Doctor Who, but it wasn't too long after, and uh, it was originally a a series that was supposed to compete with um, uh, the Avengers and the Saint to to some degree. However, Adam Adamant lives. Uh, in some ways was a lot funnier, although the Avengers were quite funny, but in a different way. Um, I was curious to know how Big Finish would deal with the characters in this because they were, particularly the female character, uh, Georgina Jones, uh, in the TV series, she was a pretty two-dimensional character. She was, and strangely enough, for uh, a show that was, the showrunner was a woman. They didn't treat the woman character very well in the show. Um, she didn't get a lot of good stuff to do. However, in Guy Adams' script, and Guy Adams actually plays a part, uh, one of the main roles actually, um, in this script, they do a fantastic job of recreating that particular show for today's audience, but still retaining uh, the, the lovability of the 60s TV series. And, and so I, I would highly recommend... Adam Adamant Lives, directed by Nicholas Briggs. Um, we're not going to mention, we may not mention every single release for the year, but we've done pretty much all that for for, uh, for January 2020. Of course, the short trips are coming out every month too. Um, I, I've, got to, I've got to be honest, I haven't heard every single one of them. Um, I do have them. They're on the back burner. Man, my back burner is huge, Philip. It's huge. So um, heading into February, um, uh, we had a, a release written by Jonathan Barnes, Dracula's Guest. Um, so that's under the Big Finish original range, so especially written. Uh, did you get a chance to listen to that one? No, and I know it was last month the sequel to that came out as well. So there's been two Draculas this year. I, mm. I haven't listened to either of them, so I'm sorry. The, the last thing that I listened to along those lines from Big Finish was... Um, their rendition of Frankenstein. So, and I absolutely love their take on it. So, um, that was the actual classic story reimagined for audio. Um, this is a an, an original adventure based on the character. So, uh, if you're into that, check it out. You'll uh, you'll you'll love it for sure. So, the the monthly release for February 2020 was actually the very first current monthly release that. Uh, we featured here on the Sirens of Audio. That was the Psychic Circus. So if you head back to episode two of the Sirens of Audio, if you haven't heard that yet, we actually were able to have a chat with Stephen White about that. And I thought it was a good idea. It was a prequel to The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. And I loved how it sort of goes into the story of the Chief Clown. Um, not, I wouldn't say it's the greatest story ever told on, on audio, uh, it does feature James Dreyfus as well as uh, an early incarnation of the master. So I think his character is interesting. I'd, I'd love that if Big Finish could do some more with James Dreyfus, that would be great. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting prequel. And it was great to talk with, uh, with Stephen about that. So check that out uh, in episode two. Um, also that month was this release of volume two of the fourth Doctor Adventures. Uh, Planet of the Planet of Witches, written by Alan Barnes, and Quest of the Engineer, written by Andrew Smith. A couple of uh, legendary writers for for Big Finish. Andrew Smith is lately he, he didn't write for Big Finish for a long time, but now he's doing a lot and he's pumping out some great stuff. Um, I've been wondering whether he's retired actually because he is producing so much 
material. I think he, he must have retired from the police he force. He probably is. He probably is. Yeah. You've, you've probably hit the nail on the head there, Philip. Um, yeah, but I've, I've got to say, I, I really... I hope, I hope they get Matthew Waterhouse back for some more, some more Adric, uh, either with the fourth or the fifth Doctor. Doesn't bother me which one. Um, I, I just can't put my finger on it, but I just like him. Maybe it's because I really like Matthew Waterhouse, uh, the man, particularly since the, that documentary of his came out. It was fantastic. A Weekend with Waterhouse. Do you remember that? I've not seen it. You've got to check it out. Okay. I think it's on the Series 19 box set. Is it the Blu-ray? Yeah. Blu-ray one, got to check so, that out. So I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I've not been buying any of the Blu-ray sets. Well, that's not good because they sell out, Philip. I know, so <laughs> I don't care enough, obviously. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've had Doctor Who shows uh, taped from the TV, then every VHS, then every DVD. I just have I don't think I could do it again. Oh, the VHSs would have been tough because they were quite expensive. They were. Tell me about to... it. It's been a fortune. Okay, so, so okay, as I say, with, with the Tom Baker, because um, they're all four part stories rather than because he'd been doing, and up until now, they've all been one, one part, you know, one hour episodes. And that could be an issue, eh? And I really felt it. I mean, I think I've mentioned before that I have struggled this year with the four parters. I just feel they really struggle to get momentum happening properly. And once again, I, you know, none of the none of the Tom Bakers. I mean, usually they are the ones I love the most. But this, the two series that started, you know, January, February ones, later on, the stuff he did later, we'll talk about is much better. I love it more. Um, but I really struggled with all his four, first four stories, all being four-parters. I really just struggled with them, keeping the momentum and the storyline up to it. So it, it's, you know, it's when I've, start, I've started to feel, feel that actually, no, I think going the hour story is the way to go. Okay, so we had uh, a 12th Doctor Chronicles box set come out. Um, Jacob Dudman um, and his portrayal of the 12th Doctor was there on that one. Um, for those who may be cynical of recasting or impersonations, probably call them recasting more than impersonation, um, just go with the story. It's the story that is king uh, with Big Finish. So uh, some great writers there, David Llewellyn, Una McCormack, uh, Elizabeth Miles, who we had on the show a couple of episodes ago, uh, wrote for the 12th Doctor Chronicles and and Mark Wright as well. And if Helen Goldwyn is directing, always quality, always yeah, quality. Very different style. They're not trying to be audio stories. They they really are chronicles. They're na- narratives with a bit of acting thrown in. Hmm. So yeah, different style, but I think, think the style worked quite well. Now, I think you mentioned to me that you liked uh, the short trips for this month, Deleted Scenes. Yeah, well, I'll put a point out Deleted Scenes. It is the only second Doctor story in the entire year. Oh, wow. So I must admit, I was a, um, just, just in terms of preparation for this, I'm not a spreadsheet person, but I need to get my head around the year. So I actually did a whole spreadsheet of the whole year of Big Finish uh, audio just to you know, see what came out what month and keep track of the writers, the directors, all those information. And I also kept track of which doctors just to have a look at, you know, what were the doctor stories for each one. And this is the only second doctor story. So Fraser, Fraser Hines uh, narrates it. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a great story, only half an hour, and it's all the second doctor gets. So can I say big finish, second doctor, he's my favorite. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I am aware, I've, one of our guests earlier in the last year mentioned the fact that they have a lot of stuff ready to go. And the, the big issue has been Wendy Padbury because she lives in France. She can't get to England to a recording studio. She hasn't got the capacity to do home recording. And so there is a whole heap of stuff ready to go, waiting to be recorded. Um, but yes, I'm, I have missed my second doctor this year because, as I said, he is my favourite. I've also heard in various extras here and there that David Richardson has said that they're doing big things with the early years ranges. So... I don't know. Does that mean they're going to recast the second Doctor? Um, because obviously we've got Peter Purvis. He does the first Doctor pretty well for these um, early early years adventures. But um, Fraser Hines as well does a, does a great a, second. He's an excellent second Doctor. Mm. He really gets the intonations right. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. 
If, they, um, if they're going to recast it, though, I say, I've say i said it before and I'll say it again. Michael Troughton, he's the one that gets his dad down pat. Well, he's mostly, he, he sounds like his dad anyway. He, you know, he's, he's, yeah, got, he's got the same voice. Yeah, yeah well, but when he, drop, when he drops it down, oh, just, just spot on, spot on. But anyway, uh, Fraser has still got the energy of the second Doctor, which is, which is all we need to tell yep. the stories. Um, okay, so Torchwood put out a... Uh, um, the Torchwood story for February was also a good one uh, because that brought back the character of Martha, didn't it? It did. So Freema Adjiman, for the first time, came to Big Finish. And she did a superb job. It's actually a really great two-hander. I think there's one other voice at KGPs, but it's really just the two of them. And it's two women discussing life, the universe, everything, career, men, um, really superb. And Freeman is just superb. I, I, I thought once she did this, we we're going to get some announcements of Freeman sets coming, which hasn't yet transpired, but I'm still hoping they get Freeman back because... She's one of those very underrated companions, I think. I think Rose was so loved that there was a bit of a backlash against Freeman when she arrived. And uh, yeah, I've heard rumours about Freeman and um, David and there were some sort of issues there. Um, but in terms of what she brought to the show, I thought Freeman brought a lovely dynamic. And um, yeah, she's, Freeman still had the best leaving scene of any modern companion because she left on her own terms for her own reasons which is nice. Very good. So other releases for February were volume threes of a couple of box sets, and that was Blake Seven Restoration, volume three, and Gallifrey, Time War, volume three. Uh, or was it Time War, Gallifrey, volume three? I think it's uh, Gallifrey, Time War, <laughs> three. Um, I find myself putting Time War stuff on the back burner. I haven't heard all of that set yet. I've heard some of it. Um, but I'm finding that whole scenario a little bit, uh, shall we say, too much for this old brain. So it's not one that I will prioritise. So if I have to put something on the back burner, it's going to be a time war set. Even if it's an eighth Doctor one, I'll listen to something else first. Um, but you might have something to say about that later when we come to the eighth Doctor <laughs> time war box set. Um <laughs> And the same with uh, with Blake Seven. However, that's just been uh, due to the volume of stuff. I've just lagged a bit behind on on Blake Seven. So I don't know if you've got anything to say about uh, those two releases, uh, Philip. But um... I will just quickly. So Blake Seven after Doctor Who is my favourite TV show, and so I have adored all the big finish. The, the big finish output of Blake Seven has been amazing. Their chronicles were just fantastic. The stories in there, and then their series have been great. Restoration suffered, and it was a bit late because of the, the death of um, poor Darrow. So he was supposed to have a major part throughout these stories, but of course he passed away. And so they took a few extra months to work out how to re-edit stuff and rewrite, redo some of the stories. Um, so it actually sets up the restoration is is the liberator. The liberator at the end of the last series basically gets wiped out. Um, and this, the, the three box sets are all about the Liberator coming back together again and being repaired and them trying to save the ship. So this, this ends that series really well. And they've managed to edit Paul Darrow into the end by you know, using previous voice work that he did. And they managed to put together basically a 10-minute scene with him at the very end, um, which, yeah, honours him, honours the show. And the sound designers have just done an amazing job to be able to put together a whole scene. But yeah, it's, it's long with, with a, an actor who's passed away. So well done, guys. And I think you've done Blake Seven Proud. And I'm looking forward to working out what comes next. They, they, they do say they've got plans. And so wait to see what those plans are because, yeah, I want more Blake Seven. But it's getting harder because there's less and less of the cast left alive. Yeah, I know. I feel a bit sad about Blake Seven. I know they've said there's more coming, but I kind of feel like, like I, I really loved the the Gareth Thomas uh, episodes that they did. But even when he passed away, it could still easily carry on because it did on TV as well. So uh, with with Paul Darrow there, with him gone, it's like, can there really be more Blake Seven? Because like you could have Blake Seven Chronicles, like they've done before, Liberator Chronicles, but 
like seven full cast without Avon is almost like Queen without Freddie Mercury, like the doors without Jim Morrison, mm. that kind of thing to me, to me. So, but I'm always curious to see what they're going to do and, and see how they do it because I can't, I, I find it hard to, maybe they can recast Avon. I don't know, but he's a tough one. He would be a very, very tough one and, and partic- possibly polarizing. For, for I, I think I think people would struggle with recasting, and I, and I think my views. I, th- I don't think they could do full cast now, but I do think there's still a place to do more chronicles, because yeah, you, know, you don't need Blake, you don't need Avon, you don't yeah, you know, you've, you've still got Kelly Jenner, um, Villa, so you've still got enough that you could actually do a couple of boxes of chronicles, which would work. And as I said, the chronicles, I, I, it's like the companion chronicles in Doctor Who and the Blake Seven, the Liberator chronicles. The writers have to work to be creative and they actually think show a lot more genius because they've got limitations placed on them. I think give, it, give them limitations and clever writers learn how to write. I think, you know, you give, give, a, give a writer, you know, $20 million script, you know, $20 million budget and say write a story for $20 million and they can come up with anything and they don't have to be creative. But when you hardly give them anything to work on, they have to be creative. And that's what I think the Chronicles do. They, they force the writers to be clever. And that's why some of them are actually the best stories we have. Excellent. Let's move on to March. Uh, we had some awesome releases in the month of March 2020. Oh, my goodness. They were fantastic. How about this one, Philip? Donna Noble kidnapped. How good was that? It was great. Uh, yeah, Don, Donna to me is probably, that, that, that fourth season is my favourite season since the show came back. I think David Tennant and oh, I've lost Catherine the name. Tate. <laughs> Catherine Tate, good grief! Um, I do think David Tennant and Catherine Kate Tate just worked so well together. Um, it was one of those ones. I mean, I think we in Australia had no idea who Catherine Tate was, and so you know when she appeared at the end at the end of um, season two, dressed as a bride, all the people in England were going, "Oh, what's going on here?" And they, a lot of people weren't very impressed because she's a comedian. We out here had no idea who she was, so it meant nothing to us particularly. And sorry, we didn't carry any baggage in terms of who she was. And so when she came in with the Runaway Bride, she was hilarious and she was a lot of fun and just a great actress. And then when they got her back for the fourth season, it was just so exciting. And so yeah, this this is it's set in that period after the Science of the Library, where she's had, she's lived her whole life. She's had children, she's lost. She's had a husband, she's lost. And so the Doctor brings her back to Earth just to have some downtime with her family but of course with donna there's no such thing as downtime <laughs> and so the whole series happens it's a lot of fun and they're great stories um yeah definitely and if you have, a, to. have a look at the writers and the production team behind that you got james goss matt fitton jacqueline rayner john dorney absolutely legendary writers you've got barnaby edwards that was that, that whenever i see him directing something he doesn't do too much uh but i mean that was the old admit- that was the only thing he directed last year. Was it? Yep. He, so there's the, there's the, the one thing he directed was this, and, and it was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to one of your favourites, Philip. Oh, Atta Girl. Yes. Well, anyhow, listen to the interview with Louise uh, Jamison early from last year. We um, t- spent a lot of time talking about Atta Girl. Um, as I said, I am loving the big finish. It's worth working hard and harder to get women writers, women directors, women producers. Um, I think the way they tell a story is different to how all men tell a story. And so, yeah, Atta Girl, it's very emotional, very powerful. And I'm hoping Atta Girl 3 is being made. I haven't heard anything yet, but I've got my fingers crossed. And speaking of women writers, um, the, the monthly release for this month, uh, for March, was written by uh, Helen Goldwyn. And that was... Uh, an interesting story, Seventh Doctor story called Subterfuge, which uh, features Rufus Hound as the meddling monk, uh, set uh, in the very late 40s, uh, uh, around the time of Winston Churchill. And uh, yeah, really interesting story. Always good to hear from uh, from Helen Goldwyn. Samuel Clemens, too, uh, seems to be directing more and more as the years go by. Uh, Samuel Clemens is... Uh, He's got a connection to the Avengers. So any Avengers fans, uh, his dad was a producer for uh, the Avengers. So, uh, but he's doing more and more in, in uh, the world of Big Finish Audio. So, uh, yeah, another good monthly there. Uh, the first Doctor 
Adventures Volume Three. Another Volume Three, was it? Was I it? can't remember. I think maybe four. I didn't write that down. Sorry, they got released separately, so I get them separate releases. Okay, so these this was released as a box set, First Doctor Adventures. Volume three or four, but the the story. This is the one that stood out to me. Return to Scarrow, uh, absolutely fantastic. Written by Andrew Smith, of course. We've been talking about him already. Directed by uh, another legendary Big Finish uh, director, Ken Bentley. And there is just. I'll, I'll start with with. I'll start with my negative with this Tardis team. I actually love this Tardis team. Full recasting, uh, except for. Uh, I would pronounce it Claudia Grant. I think she pronounces it Claudia Grant. Um, find her characterization of Susan a little bit uh, annoying. She, she kind of does Dramatic. RP. She does a bit. She does RP like with on steroids, you know, uh, 60s RP too. And, and it just is a little bit over the, I find it a little bit over the top. Everyone else is quite contained. David Bradley's perfect as his uh, characterization of the first, first doctor. But I just find Susan... Uh, like a lot of people found Susan in the original TV series a little bit annoying. I find this Susan a bit annoying too. However, that took nothing away from this story for me. Uh, the, 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 the direction, the sound design on this was, was probably my biggest thing. One, uh, one of the events I did when I was um, uh, helping out with the Doctor Who Club of Australia years ago was uh, an event with Tristram Carey. Uh, and it was his his music that really stood out to me more than anything. When the Daleks was released on VHS all those years ago, I went. I remember catching the train. For, I, I lived in Sydney at the time, Philip, and I caught the train from Richmond into the Queen Victoria Building, and I bought the Daleks. I went home and just I just devoured it. I thought it was absolutely sensational. But it was Tristram Carey's music that stood out to me from that. And it's Howard Carter that does the music uh, and sound design on this. And he, he kind of does music along the same lines as Tristram Carey, all the same sounds from the original Dalek City in that uh, original TV story are all there. And they're not just there, they're enhanced and added to. Um, and I just, I just love it. I just love this. It was probably the, probably one of my favorite, I call this a spin-off. It's not really a spin-off, but it, it's one of the spin-off box sets. Uh, one of my favorites of the year. Yes, I fully agree. The music is great. Um, yeah, good story. It was a lot of fun. It, pay, it pays if you know the original story because it, um, it does some nice nods. To the, oh, yes, lots lots and lots of references to it. Lots of nods to the, the first Dalek story. Yeah, And, and the last of Romanoff's, the other one in the box set, good, solid, historical. Um, yeah, once again, seeing the, the Doctor and Companions in a history situation, it was a lot of fun. Very good. So uh, another box set that was released, another volume three, The Lives of Captain Jack. Uh, three stories in there, directed by Scott Hancock. Uh, and the theme, the theme music, I'm just going to look this up. Okay, the theme music for The Lives of Captain Jack was uh, done by Ben Foster. So sound designs done by, by uh, Steve Fox and Richard Fox. But um, I, I love the theme music for The Lives of Captain Jack, one of my favourite themes. It sort of captures Captain Jack all the way from Queen Victoria period right through to the future. So it, it, it's, it's hard to explain unless you hear it yourself. I don't know if you know what I mean when I say this, Philip, but I think that theme music encapsulates everything and all of Captain Jack's history in one 20-second piece of music or 30-second piece of music. I think it's great. Yeah, it, it's uh, once again... All the th a lot of the theme songs are so good, and yeah, that one's a lot of fun. It, it, it yeah, it lets you know where you're heading. Um, but great box, box set, and once again, just a chance of um, there's a, there's a great story. I mean, Camille Kaduri, um, is just a hilarious in this. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> why she's got off with Jack for a quick adventure is just hilarious, <laughs> but just what they end up doing in terms of how they end up surviving. Um, but yeah, Jackie's just marvelous, but the yeah, also but she might be funny. She might be funny, but she has a really nice dramatic, uh, some nice dramatic scenes there. Really emotional tugs at the heartstrings about you know some of the comments she makes about being the one who's left behind and and uh, virtually forgotten about. 
Um, so it's good that you can go off and have these little adventures with Jack. But uh, yeah, particularly that performance was by Camille Kaduri was stunning. Yeah. And once again, another great story with um, River Song. And the thing about River Song, Captain Jack, are keep bumping each other throughout history in the wrong order at the wrong time. And so you've really got to try and think, hang on a second, which is this, where is this happening? And you know, there's a great little meeting that happens with the two of them um, during the long game. No, it's not the long game. Yeah, the long game. Suddenly she's appeared there. So River, River's actually ha- hunting, hunting the doctor down at different points. So just the two of them, how they keep intersecting at each other's timelines, working backwards and forwards. Um, it's, it's a clever play on what happens with River and the doctor but happy with her and, and Jack. It's a great story. And once again, in and out of the new series, backwards and forwards, different doctors. Um, it, will, it will test your Doctor Who knowledge. Worth listening to them. And of course, um, the, the Torchwood Monthly for that month was called Isolation. But at that stage, I had still been turned off Torchwood for quite some time and I wasn't listening to the monthlies. Uh, it was a decision I'd made. Um, However, in April, when Torchwood announced their release, it was going to be called Tropical Beach Sounds and... Oh, what's it called? Oh, it's a long name. I'm just going to call it Tropical Beach Sounds and other Relaxing Soundscapes Volume 3, I think it is. Volume 2, Volume 4, some volume. Uh, but it was starring uh, Michael Palin. And so I was really interested in how they do that. And uh, I, I, I bought it, listened to it, and that hooked me back into Torchwood. Interesting that none of the uh, actually original cast were responsible for hooking me back in. It was Michael Palin, but that was a, that was uh, certainly a pivotal release for me for 2020 was uh, Tropical Beach Sounds the, the, with Michael Palin. So what did you think of that one, Phil? It was very unusual and I d- didn't know what to expect from it. And it starts off being typical Michael Palin, Sir Michael Palin, um, yeah, he, these are sir to be a bit tongue in cheek, I think. But yeah, it, it's a, it's an interesting one because it, it's two full name: Tropical Beach Sounds and Other Relaxing Seascapes. Number four. It, it's all about um, those relaxation tips that people listen to, but then behind that can be an undercurrent of evil. And so it starts off quite amusing, but there's just this storyline that slowly pervades, but all just narrated by one person. But the way Michael Palin goes from soothing, relaxing. Um, and, and he's playing himself, really, because he's all about you know, it's listening to him, about learning how to relax. But as he gets more and more evil, it's really very engaging. Yeah, it's, it's very inventive. That's what I love to see, invention. And we did talk to Scott Hancock about that release uh, oh, a few episodes back. So go and look for that episode 20, around the early 20s, that was. So check that out if you haven't heard that. And you'll get Scott Hancock's take on working with Sir Michael Palin. So the monthly release for April was uh, Cry of the Vultress. Now, this is my favourite monthly release for 2020. And the reason for that is, oh, there's, there's quite a few reasons for that. Six Doctor, Constance and Flip, an amazing TARDIS team. Yeah, so a trilogy of stories featuring uh, these three. Uh, this, was the, this was the first of the three. Um, it also has the Ice Warriors. I love the Ice Warriors. Don't, know, don't ask me why. There's just something about them that I've always liked. Uh, I like all their appearances in the new series as well. Uh, Empress of Mars was where the character that they use in this particular story was. They use the same actress who played the Empress, and she appears in Cry of the Vultress. It is a completely alien world. So the story is written by Darren Jones. He hasn't done too much for Big Finish before. Um, a completely alien world. And the soundscape, who did the sound on this one? Simon Powell. Oh, that's right. I knew it was someone different. That's why I hesitated. The, the soundscape on this, Simon Power. Now, he hasn't done a great deal for Big Finish in terms of Doctor Who either. He did a lot of Pathfinder ad- adventures. And he's also worked on a lot of Blake, a lot of the Blake Sevens. Done a, done a few Doctor Whos, but mainly Blake Sevens and Pathfinder Legends. So, uh, uh, but the soundscape, totally alien soundscape, all the sounds in that, they took me there. This was the one that sparked my imagination more than anything else this year in terms of the monthly releases. And I absolutely loved this one. I don't think it had the same impact 
that it had on me uh, as it as it did on you, Philip. But man, uh, the the combination of all these things, uh, the story was good. Had great monsters in it, uh, great TARDIS team. Uh, all the elements in that added up to me to be my favourite release uh, for for twenty twenty. No, I did enjoy it. It was great. But my favourite release of twenty twenty is the next month, same TARDIS team. Oh. It's a slightly different story, but we'll get to that in a moment. Very good. And, um, oh, yeah, we did talk to John Ainsworth, who directed this one uh, on, uh, on one of our early episodes too. So, so do check that out. Uh, Susan's War was a box set that was highly anticipated. And it was one that I only listened to recently, believe it or not. It was one that I put on the back burner. Uh, but I wish it's I didn't. It's, it's a time war, so you would put, have put ignored it. That's right. That's right. But, oh, man. Wasn't it fantastic? It was fantastic. Uh, Actually, I went back and listened to the short trip beforehand. Yeah. Um, something about the heart, I can't remember what it was called now, um, but where the Eighth Doctor comes and speaks to Susan. Because they, the Eighth Doctor and Susan have had a number of adventures together um, because of her son and the, the grandson in and, and the Lucy Millers, and there was a special Christmas episode. So there's a strong bond between Susan and Paul McGann's Doctor. And so... It's Susan deciding that she's going to fight the time war against her grandfather's wishes, and so it's yeah, great story. The William Russell episode is marvelous. William Russell is now sounding, I think, I think he sounds sounded old for the first time. On the whole, his other releases done earlier, I haven't noticed him sounding old, but sadly he did. But they were writing him old, so it was okay. It was they went to get him because there's a there's an adventure set back on the sense sphere, and so. They got William Russell to come, but he was sounding old, but he was supposed to be old, so th- that was okay. But there's also a Marvel's episode, too, with Paul McGann as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've just listened to it re- re- recently? Enjoyed it? Oh, I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, anyone who hasn't heard that yet, definitely listen to it, particularly for that first story with William Russell actually playing an old Ian. So that was that was great. Um, uh, my, my, my other, what I also loved this month was the um, countermeasures, the new countermeasures stories. Um, I have loved Countermeasures since they, they came it out. I was a bit sad that they decided to get rid of it, but they had these last two adventures. Um, yeah. one, one with the Mavellans and then with the Daleks. And they, they're, they're huge. Um, it, it's, it's interesting watching 60s, well, the 70s, this is now the 70s, pre-unit trying to work out how to how do you deal with Daleks. And yeah, being creative and finding a way to, to deal with the Daleks when they're such a dreadful force. But, and, and no doctor. But yeah, and it's really... interest, interesting that it ended with a tragic end, or could it maybe not be a tragic end? It's 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 left open ended because these are apparently uh, the the final episodes in the series for for the moment. But it's but it's been left open, so if they want to go back there, they can go back. Yeah, I hope they do. Yeah, absolutely. And I did talk about this uh, on a previous episode with Adam Richard. So Australian fans will know Adam Richard from from Whovians. It's also a writer for uh, the Hard Quiz. Uh, so go and check that out too. We spoke with him about that. All right. Into the month of May, we had uh, Heritage 3, which was uh, the Paternoster Gang, uh, another three-episode series, uh, which is really good. I, I, I always like listening to these. Uh, some people find Strax uh, and his humour annoying. Uh, perhaps that's the younger, more... Uh, uh, Serious fans, but maybe I'm getting old and and uh, just wanting to laugh more. And I find Strax just very, very enjoyable to listen to. And all the stories in here are always good. Uh, another series that was brand new that was released this month was Time Slip. That was um, uh, a series that was uh, went for, for 26 episodes back in the 1970, I think it was. Uh, it was originally released in colour. You can see them on... on uh, YouTube, but the episodes only exist in black and white, except for one. One of the 26 episodes is in colour. Um, and it was an interesting way that they dealt with it. They didn't sort of reboot the series. They sort of started it much later chronologically down the track. So it's uh, well worth listening to. Um, written by Andrew Smith, and another one came out the following month, uh, written by Mark Platt too. So that's uh, another series well worth listening to, because it also has Sarah Sutton in a non-NISA role, which is always refreshing to see some of our regulars in those other roles. It's nice. Um, yep, what else you, did we have? Well, we've got my favourite monthly release, which was Scorched Earth. 
So I think I think like you, I think the the TARDIS team of Flip, uh, Constance, and the Sixth Doctor just work really well together. Um, and once again, one one day I want to go back and listen to all their stories chronologically from beginning to end as they come in, go out because you know there's different permeations of this TARDIS team. But they they just travel so well together. And Scorched Earth for me um, was just having a look at because it's such at the end of the war, uh, first and second world war. And there's just moral dilemmas in terms of how you respond. And having Constance, who you know is a product of the Second World War, who's seen the horrors, her having ethical dilemmas in terms of what she should do in terms of the Nazis, and when she is confronted with Germans who aren't Nazis but they're German, and how does she deal with her anger with them, and does she want revenge? And and then Flip, who's a modern character, who's much more Easy going about the whole war thing, so you got you had the these two characters who are usually so close have a major ethical clash, and I, I couldn't tell where it was going to go. And so the whole story I was intrigued by because I didn't know how these characters were going to relate and how they're going to rectify the, this moral dilemma of what you do with Germans and who do you destroy and who do you wipe out and what's justified in war. So yeah, yeah. I, I have to agree with you that uh, that conflict between uh, Flip and Constance was what made that story stand out to me. And I absolutely love those two together. Oh, I, want, I want to see more of them together. Hopefully, uh, once the monthly's finished, we can have some box sets with that TARDIS team. Indeed. All right. That's, that, that's, that's the special thing that got released this month for the first time was the first story made in lockdown. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you know, with, with um, everything happening, particularly in England and, you know, the guys over there and, you know, the U- US in particular, um, you know, I know, yeah, got lots of listeners over both those places um, have been doing it very tough with COVID and struggling. And, yeah, our, our thoughts are still with you as you're still dealing with all sorts of um, surges and deaths. But big finish, we weren't sure what was going to happen in terms of recording and was it going to end. And for, for most of the arts they have really struggled. Theatres have closed, movies have closed down, TV shows have closed down for, for a long time and are still struggling. But Big Finish worked out how to keep going. And so we didn't lose audio content. And so the first, I think just to demonstrate to us that they knew what they were doing, um, Shadow of the Sun, which should have been released, I think 2025 or 2026, it was being written for a long time in the future. But because they actually had first recorded this and it was so successful, they released it early. And so we've got a lovely Tom Baker, Louise Jemison story, and it's a cracker. Um, one hour format, which I love, um, but just a really great story. There was some you know, interesting overtones in terms of fanaticism and what that drives you to. Um, how clearly can you see what, what your leaders are saying and can you see truth through it? So some interesting things about science in it. So there's some really, we could discuss at length some of the undertones, but just once again, seeing that you couldn't see the change of quality with this story from anything surrounding it. So this one made in lockdown is just as precise and excellent as anything around it. And so Big Finish was showing us in this month, it could be done. Well done. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a, it was a great one. Uh, we also had a, a Third Doctor Adventures box set released uh, featuring an, another one of your favourite stories, Poison of the Daleks by Guy Adams. Uh yeah, do, do, do a bit of gushing over that one, Philip. <laughs> um, I think p- partly just in terms of, I mean, just I love Hugh Kenny Manning, but I think this is the first time we've had the Brigadier. Um, I can't quite remember if this is the first time or not, but just hearing the Brigadier's voice was just superb. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's a traditional u- unit story. It was a lot of fun. Um, actually, what I will quick say is there's a lot of, this was a good month. Um, Torchwood, Iceberg. Um, a wonderful two-hander with um, Owen Harper's character, um, played by Gorman. Um, that was superb. It was also in a hospital with patients in comas. Um, another two-hander. And once again, I think once you give writers very limited um, situations, um, it just works really well that way. So yeah, Grace Knight um, wrote this great script. So Brian Torchwood. And actually, the short trip you love too, don't you? Which is the regeneration impossible. Mm, yep, that um, was a good one. So Jacob Dudman playing two doctors, 
Um, and it's really it's just a two-hander where, where he's playing both doctors having a conversation backwards and forwards. So if you don't listen to it, it's really cheap, those ones. Mm-hmm. So have, yeah. have a listen to it. It's great. Absolutely. Um, one of the ones I was looking forward to for this month was a, a non-Doctor Who release, a Big Finish original, called The Human Frontier. Uh, because I knew I was going to be talking with Nicholas Briggs about that particular story. And if you haven't heard that yet, go back and have a listen. Uh, it's a really good chat I was able to have with Nick. Um, and The Human Frontier, uh, classic sci-fi, but with with uh, Nicholas Briggs' trademark small cast with massive universe written all over it. Uh, and yeah, it was it was like all the big Finnish originals. This one was uh, was another great one that they could uh, they could tack onto their wall. It was fantastic. Nasty cliffhanger. <laughs> so it's a good thing. That's good why thing I said that... to him, you can't stop it like that and no. and, uh, and not have a series two because when I spoke to him, I don't think a series two had been commissioned. It wasn't long after that one had been commissioned, so that that was good. Okay, so for June, uh, the Torchwood release was Dinner and a Show, which I think was Yanto and Tosh. Is that right? It was. And it's so much fun. So if you, if you love a restaurant, it, it's, yeah, it, it is hilarious. The whole preface before, it's, it's one of those really lighthearted ones. There's, there's Alien Menace and there's you know, possible thousands of people could die. But it's just the, the two characters having a very funny time because Tosh thinks she's going to get a date with someone else and Yanto turns up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very amusing. Uh, we also had the uh, highly anticipated release of Stranded One, which for me, what I was looking forward to was seeing uh, what role the caretaker would play, played by Tom Baker. So that was an interesting set to have. We've got Volume 2 coming out soon, uh, but this was uh, really interesting. Uh, totally different setting from Ravenous, that's for sure. Ravenous are highly uh, charged, very scary box set. and We've gone all suburban. In stranded yeah i think it's good to have a change now and then it, this wouldn't be my choice of what i want to happen for too long um the, yeah as i said the, the time war four that comes out later the poem again that i'm preferring him in the time war four time war series a lot more it's it's domestic it's yeah not 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 my cup of tea i mean i'll keep getting them all um but i'm looking forward to him getting the tardis fixed and them leaving yeah. All right. And uh, what else have we got? We had some uh, Steed and Mrs. Peel. Yeah, I love uh, the adventures. So that's great. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, Star Cops, Mars 2. Have you heard any of the Star Cops yet, Philip? Or I have them, them, but I've not listened to them. Well, I, I, haven't, I didn't hear this one yet because that's still, I'm a little bit behind on the Star Cops, but man, it is really, really good. Um, Someone said recently on social media, why don't they use the Star Cops theme from the TV series? Well, some people reckon it was great. I didn't like it at all. It was one of the things that turned me off the TV series was the theme tune. And I don't care if, uh, what was his name? Justin Hayward uh, from the Moody Blues did it. Uh, don't care. It was, it turned me off. Uh, the theme music that they use on the big finish sets is much better, in my opinion. Uh, we had Missy 2 uh, back in action, uh, which was fantastic rufus uh, hound rufus hound and her so the those meddling, two together <laughs> the meddling monk and missy are just so good together and some amazing stories um yeah john dawney's just keeps writing better and better stuff so yeah good stuff very good um the the torchwood for this month was probably next to tropical beach sounds this one was probably my favorite uh, Save Our Souls, it's uh, a Queen Victoria story. Uh, and I absolutely loved this one. It showed all the nasty bits of Queen Victoria. I really didn't like it, but I loved the story at the end. It was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, she, she, Queen Victoria got three torture stories this year, which mm. is amazing. So Rowena Cooper's a great actress, but yeah, this it was set on an island. Um, it's a bit of horror Frank Rock, Rockish in some ways, as everyone keeps dying bit by bit. Um, but everyone is told when they're going to die. And so it really is very macabre and quite terrifying because of it. And you never know which way some character is going to jump. So it's, it's that unknown element of just not knowing how people are going to behave that keeps you engaged. But yeah, it's, and, yeah, you are right. It's a great story. 
And, and when I mentioned Star Cops, I failed to mention we're in July now. So we're, we're sort of jumping ahead at a rate of knots at the moment. So uh, Robots 2. So the, the first Robots box set came out just November, December 2019. This was the the, the eagerly anticipated Robots 2 with, um, with a story featuring David Collings and Pamela Salem as their original characters from the Robots of Death. And uh, this, this is a series that is is just so listenable. It's just a, a pleasure to listen to uh, with high quality actors in it. Like it's hard to believe some of these actors that Big Finish get. It, uh, it your really, thoughts on... Yeah, it really is astounding in terms of the quality they get. I'm not sure if you've heard, they've just been announced that box set five and six have been commissioned to be released too. So I had originally thought there's just, there just going to be four and mm. now they've announced five and six, which is great. And also they've put out the information for the next box set um, and it was good to see that um, put, uh, both Paul and Toos will be in the next one as well. So I wasn't awesome. sure with, with the death of David Collins. David Collins. I wasn't hundred percent sure whether we'd see any more Paul, but it looks like they've got at least something else recorded. Um, I, I was surprised by the fact that Toos and Paul just had their own. So There's only three episodes in the box set, and Toos and Toos have their own episode, which doesn't yet or, connect. Or Paul and Toos. So Paul and Toos. They say. Pool and poos. Oh. <laughs> oh, That's Stan and Philip. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go for it. Um, they got their own episode, which, which surprised me. They, they weren't interacting at all with the other main characters. And so just how they slowly weaved them in, and we'll see the next box set. They weaved in a bit closer. But, yeah, it was a great great set. And number three we'll get to, but equally good. I, I'm, I'm really loving the robots. And, and so we had two monthly releases, uh, Doctor Who releases in, Ju- in July because we didn't have one in June. Uh, the Lovecraft Invasion by Rob Valentine was postponed because it had, well, it deals with H.P. Lovecraft, the man, who is uh, known as a, as a serial xenophobe and racist. And so Big Finish uh, delayed that because it was in the midst of the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that was going on there. So probably a good decision to, to postpone it. Um, but the Lovecraft Invasion was, uh, I, I really enjoyed the story. There was some, there were some good things about it. Uh, you and I have been debating whether or not it was really necessary to, to, to add bits or take bits out and, uh, make it a little bit more politically correct. Who knows? There, uh, it's just, it's interesting. Uh, just last night I was surfing through Amazon prime and I came across a Lovecraft documentary. So I thought I'd watch that and, yeah, some of the stuff in his writing, he was pretty horrible. And I don't think in the Lovecraft invasion, they dealt much with what he actually wrote uh, and some of the words he used within that writing. He was just getting lectured to by the Sixth Doctor as if we were supposed to know what, he, what he'd written. If I'd have known in, like if, he, if there had been some quotes for, of his writing within the story, I would have known what the Sixth Doctor was referring to. But not really being a, a Lovecraft aficionado, I found it difficult to relate to what the Sixth Doctor was uh, was was drilling him with uh, to, uh, through certain parts of that story. So, uh, but the story was the story was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I and mean, we had a great chat with Rob Valentine about it when it came out. Um, and we had a, it was a cautious discussion because at the time. Um, you know, it's interesting. You know, so much of our lives and what's happening in the world is based around what's happening here. Um, but yeah, at the time that you know was the, the tragic death um, that happened in America and the whole Black Lives Movement, which was an important thing. I think all all countries had to start thinking through what we have done and what we failed to do um, in terms of racism. And we've only just started the conversation. Like nothing's nothing has been solved, but there was at least an acknowledgement. And for that reason, yeah, Big Finish held back on releasing what could have been a controversial story because the character himself um, wasn't a very nice human being. And then you have the whole debate about um, what does a person, what does it matter for a person's beliefs in terms of their work? And how do you judge the past and judge people of the past? Um, And therefore, what do you do with their work? Because the reality is, there's a, there's a shocking history happening everywhere with all people. And we, we need to keep examining what we can accept and can't accept of people's works. And you know, there's, there's the rightful censorship 
um, yeah, you know, something should be taken off streaming services because, and not not because they should be censored, but because community tastes have changed, and yeah, you know, there's shows that were funny we we deemed acceptable in the seventies, which aren't acceptable now, but how much we judge and how much we condemn. And yeah, and we have discussed the fact that yeah, they wrote a lot of a bit of new material for this to make it blatantly obvious that they were opposed to racism. Um, I think we know that Big Finish is opposed to racism. So I'm, I'm not convinced it had to be inserted, but they wanted to show care and they wanted to show concern and solidarity and they're probably good things. But yeah, I mean, the, the actual story itself, great story. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great TARDIS team that's happening. Um, and just what they managed to do in terms of fear and inside people's minds was good. And the, other month- the, ne- the yeah. next monthly was uh, Time Apart, which was set after uh, the last trilogy of, of Fifth Doctor stories, introducing the new companion, Mark. Um, so the Doctor had left his companions and gone off on his own for a little while. So this uh, was, was, was four single episodes of the Fifth Doctor, which is interesting because you, you mentioned to me that the, the Fifth Doctor hadn't had a single main range story Four part story this year. No, that's indeed. So, so uh, it's it, 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 it's always interesting when Big Finish do something the TV show didn't do, and so you know once again it's hard to remember what had happened months and months previously with Mark, yeah. um, but Mark had been semi converted into a Cyberman in the yeah. previous story, and and so the Fifth Doctor was struggling with guilt and what to do with it. It's a bit like the, there's a Blake Seven episode um, after the first member of the crew Gan dies. Blake beams himself down to a planet to sort of deal with his guilt and his failure and how to do with it. And this is the fifth Doctor acting the same way, which he never did in the TV series. I mean, I, I still get blown away by the fact that, you know, Adric died one episode. There's five minutes of, oh, no, we can't go back. We can't do anything. Oh, well, let's go with the next story. Um, and th- there's just no, re- there's no remorse. There's no sadness. There's hardly another mention again, of, of something that's bad has happened. But here, the, the Fifth Doctor is actually dealing with guilt and dealing with remorse. Um, and, and he's dealing with Adric as well because he failed to deal with Adric at the time. So Big Finish is retroing nicely what the TV mm. series failed to do well, which is you know, one of the things I love about Big Finish is I think they do a lot of stuff better than the TV show does it. Um, yeah. But there are four great stories. The, the one that ca- captured me the most is one set during Cold War uh, in Germany. Um, because the it's, it's a East story. Germany in the in the underground, wasn't it? Yeah, the underground. In the 70s. Be, that's right. Because there's some yep. stations, the underground stations that passed through West Germany, um, and so that they had to stop making sure that no one could defect that way. And so there were scars on the stations. And there's a a great story with with the Doctor and a, a East German, um, and trying to work out what to do with, in terms of defecting or not defecting. Yeah, a lot of fun. Well, fun's the wrong word. So, but they, they were they're four solid stories, but once again, nothing of length from Peter Davison. All he, all his stories are short. This and directed by Jamie Anderson, he hasn't directed many Doctor Who's this year. Uh, maybe he's been concentrating on his own Jerry Anderson releases uh, through Big Finish, which we haven't mentioned, probably because we haven't listened to them. But uh, uh, if you want to listen to some of the Jerry Anderson uh, releases that they have done throughout the year. There are some free snippets that you can get. If you just do a search for Jerry Anderson or even Jamie Anderson, you might get links uh, sent links to uh, some of the free snippets or free episodes that you can, that you can listen to from uh, Jerry Anderson releases. So we, that takes us to August. And uh, one of the releases for that month was Adam Adam at lives box set two, uh, which was quite a change from the, First box set. Uh, it, because... it was hard work. Can I say I had well... no I had no idea what was going on <laughs> till I got to the third episode. I spent two episodes really confused. But and it's worth the, it. It's the, worth the, it. The payoff was brilliant. The payoff was brilliant. But I really spent two episodes not having a clue what was going on. Um, and, and then once I got to the third episode, it all made sense. It was very clever. I was uh, when I was listening to this. I was driving through. Kakadu in the Northern Territory uh, with uh, with my caravan on the back, my headphones on, the family was all happy doing their own thing. I was listening to this and uh, with with the Kakadu National Park around me and this going in my ears, I was completely spun out. I can I can tell you that. 
But um, it's interesting. They they deal like with the TV series. They say in the extras that in the TV series you you think well maybe adamant because the story is Adam adamant is a is a hero from the 19th century that's been sort of put on ice and then resurrected in the 60s. Um, they seem to indicate that you never know for sure whether this is just in his head or or, or not. Uh, I didn't get that from the TV series. It was always, no, he really was a hero and he was on ice. In the audio series, they kind of, it's a bit more ambivalent uh, and, they, and they deal with what if it is in his head? And uh, a lot of this particular box set deals with that, particularly the second story. Uh, but definitely, definitely worth a listen. I, I love the, the guy they've cast. I think his name's Blake Riston or Ritson. Uh, the guy they've cast is Adamant. Absolutely brilliant. All the cast is fantastic. Great voice. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. He's been in a few other Doctor Whos as well. Just can't remember what they are off the top of my head. Okay, so the monthly for August was uh, another sequel to that Fifth Doctor trilogy, but this time without the Doctor so much. It was uh, Thin Time uh, and Mad Quake. So Thin Time was a story featuring the Doctor, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a two-part story this time rather than a one-part story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, the one that I enjoyed most was Mad Quake, which was really just dealing with the three companions who'd been left behind. So, you know, Mark dealing with what was happening to him in terms of the conversion into yeah. being a Cyberman, and then Tegan and Nissa and how they were dealing with, once again, Adric's death in part as well. Yeah. Um, so, once again, improving on the TV series and actually giving the characters some real emotional depth. I, I will say the standout moment for Thin Time uh, is the final scenes. Because we have, I'm, I'm going to spoil it. Darn it! I never spoil it usually, but it's been out for six months now. So, uh, and it, I don't think it spoils the story anyway. But at the end of Thin Time, the Fifth Doctor uh, has a conversation with the Eleventh Doctor, uh, and Jacob Dubman comes to 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 play that part. And uh, I think it's an absolutely fantastic scene. Love it. Listen to it just for that, if nothing else. Uh, a great uh, monthly release. Yeah. Okay. One of the other box sets that came out was one that we found out through talking with Scott Hancock that it was actually uh, supposed to come out a year or so earlier, and that was the Six Doctor and Perry box set with a with a four one hour episodes that you absolutely raved about, Philip. Yeah, I think this is probably could be my favourite release of the year. Um, yeah. I love the Sixth Doctor, and Perry. Sometimes I can take and leave, but Perry was just so well written here. Every story in this box set was brilliant, and yeah, I just love. I mean, Nev, Nev Fountain, who's you know married to Nicola Water, wrote her an amazing episode. Um, but the, the way the way that they, yeah, all, all of them, the way they comment on society. Uh, one, actually, uh, can I can I just say that Nev Fountain's hmm. married to Nicola Bryant. Oh, what did I say? Walker. Oh, okay. Let's get let's get the fact. That's a pretty big fact <laughs> to get wrong. <laughs> yes, we've been talking about Nicola Walker, but just in robots. But anyhow, let's go to Nicola Bryant this time. I had, you know, I had to click. They were both Nicholas. There you go. So Nev Fountain is married to Nicola Bryant, and he's written her the most amazing story. He regularly does. There's, if you go back and look at any Perry story which has been written by Nev Fountain, he spoils his wife. In what he writes, the, the Piscon, this Piscon, um, Piscon paradox. Piscon paradox is a, is a beautiful example of him really spoiling his wife with that story. But once again, he does with this as well. Um, very clever. If you into psychology, there's a really clever whole episode on um, psychology and what's going on there. There's a brilliant episode on um, how society society is dealing with social media and the need to be liked. Um, yeah, all of them are great. So. Yeah, that's what, so this is one of my picks of the year, and I, and I'm when we were speaking when we were speaking to Scott Hancock, um, I was kind of saying this is this is the way I was hoping we were going to be going instead of the monthly, once the monthly range ended, and he seemed to be saying it's different to this as well, which is a shame because this box set it's like the uh, box that we had with Lucy and the Eighth Doctor, which was last year I think. Mm, um, yep. Those those one-off box sets of four stories with a companion, a doctor. They're beautiful. I want one more of those, please. I'm sure there will be after the monthly's finished. We've got to fill the hole with something. We do. 
Okay, so um, yeah, fantastic. I, I agree with you. I, I listened to the. I've only listened to one of those. To my shame, I'm still catching up. Uh, I listened to the Nev Fountain episode just yesterday, actually, and um, I can't remember what it was called now. But it's the one with the Sigmund Freud robots. Yes, uh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I just loved it. So so funny. I I love Nev Fountain's writing. He, he, I wish he'd write some more. He, like he wrote the Kingmaker, which is one of the. One of the ones from the early Big Finish years that everyone turns back to, like that is one of your classic Doctor Who comedy, but serious at the same time. And this is this was no different. It was good. Uh, he's, a, he's I mean, I've met Nev once and he's really dry sense of humour. Um, he's, he's, yeah, he's good fun to be around, but you're never quite sure what he's going to say. And he thinks he thinks <laughs> care about anything he says before he says it. Yeah. Uh, two wonderful torture releases this month. So Red Base, which is... Uh, Tom Price's Sergeant Andy. Um, and it, was, it's, it's, it totally throws you because he's just walking along Mars, you think, and then you worked out, oh, hang on, he's not actually on Mars. It's a, it's a parody of um, Big Brother show where there's all these people thinking they're on a Mars, well, not really on a Mars base, but a Mars situation. They're, they're working out whether they could survive on Mars but it's all supposed to be a reality show, except they've stopped. It was so boring, got such bad ratings, they cancelled it um, two weeks in, but they're still living as if they're in a reality show and an evil computer that's killing everyone one by one. And he gets caught up in that. So that, that's a, a great... Um, starts off funny and then gets more and more serious. And I mentioned it before, Torchwood Soho, uh, which once again started Andy, um, but going back to there's another character that they've introduced called Norton. Um, who's around in the 1960s. And uh, Sergeant Andy goes back to try and save Norton's life and gets caught up in a whole adventure there. But yeah, that's a great adventure. But interesting, there's a um, bit of plague stuff in there, which was interesting for the times. And this month also saw the very first release of David Tennant's lockdown episodes, Out of Time. Uh, with the fourth doctor so that was a, a release that we devoted a, a whole episode of the sirens of audio to so check that out so we won't talk about talk about that all again but um yeah a very very good story there and a great uh, short trip too with um india fisher he's still now is and it's very much told she's telling a story it's narrated in first person um by charlie and i must admit the short trips where which are actually acted out are my favorite and uh, it's got a bit of a heart to it, a bit of a punch at the end, which is nice. Very good. So September sees us uh, looking at a few more box sets. And the, the monthly release is another set of two stories. So two two-part stories uh, written by Gemma Arrowsmith and, and Catherine Armitage. Um, Gemma wrote uh, The Flying Dutchman. Uh, but the big uh, story for us would be displaced by Kat Armitage because we were able to have her on The Sirens. And it was very exciting to have a brand new writer on the show, female author, uh, full of energy, full of excitement, and uh, uh, looking forward to hearing much more from Kat. So uh, that, was a, that was a great uh, chat we had with her, wasn't it? Yeah, Kat is a lot of fun. I think she's a friend of the podcast now. Um, certainly <laughs> she's uh, actively involved in Twittering all the time. So, yeah, Kat, if you're listening, thank you. We're looking forward to ne your next story coming out soon. Uh, there was a, a New Adventures of Bernice Summerfield uh, set as well. Uh, with who She's still with the Alternative Universe Doctor, played by David Warner. This one was called Lost in Translation, this set. Uh, four stories in there. Uh, what can I say uh, about these? Benny is a character who's been going on Big Finish for well over 20 years now, so... And combine her with David Warner. I don't know how you can go wrong. No, I am. Um, I, this is, maybe everyone knew this. I've only recently found out that David Warner and Lisa Bowerman are actually um, together. They're a couple. Do you know right. that? I you did, did know. Did not yeah, know. Yes, I didn't know either. But they they met at Big Finish and they fell in love and they're yeah they're they're a couple now. Oh, and, how cool um, is that? <laughs> yeah, and that's I think part of the reason why they keep writing for them together is because you know they love working together. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of gossip oh, there. It's, it's out long, of the public field. Long may it continue. Yes. And, um, yeah, once again, huge, huge star, David Warner. And he does he's, like, hmm? Isn't it interesting? He's one of those voices that is totally, totally recognisable. Anything he's in, 
you go, oh, yeah, that's David Warner again. But he's not one of those one that ever irritates you. You just love him wherever he is. Yeah. And when you think he's played, you know, he's played major roles with the fourth Doctor, because he played a sort of um, yeah, capitalist yeah. evil person. He's playing the Doctor here in the Unbound series. He played another major character in Blake Seven. And as, as you say, very distinctive. He's got a hey, lovely Jago voice. and Lightfoot too. Jago and Lightfoot as well. Um, always distinctive voice, but he just plays different characters. And, and even though he's got his rich, beautiful you know, sounds of his voice, every time he plays a different character, you know that whether you're to like him or don't like him or very quickly. It's amazing how he's able to put so much change into, into the words he plays. Yeah, he's a, he's a movie star. Let's face it, he's a world movie movie star. Classic. And and Star Trek fans, he's ours. Yes. <laughs> he might have been in Star Trek, but he's ours. He's ours. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, one of your other faves that you're absolutely raving about this year, Philip. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, a Time War box set that, uh, well, you tell us all about it. Well, I mean, my favourite Eighth Doctor story this year was the Time War box set, um, which, and ironically, probably the story which is most most got me. He's not The Doctor's not in that much. Mm. Um, it's like bleak, isn't it? Um, so Palindrome by John Dorney. Um, that story, it had me just thinking so much. So, you know, the first episode's working backwards, the second episode's working forwards in time, but the two stories interlink backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, I think it's just a brilliantly constructed story. When it comes to you know, the, the great classics of Big Finish, I think that's one of the stories which you know, it's, it's up there with, um, the, you know, the, the, I was going to say the Pirates, Spare Parts, Midnight. Um, I think this is one of the ones that's going to go down um, as, as the great classics. And then the other two are just great stories too. I, I just, I enjoy the Eighth Doctor with a companion having fun. Um, Stranded was good. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy Stranded. Um, it was just a bit too parochial. And I think the Doctor was just too much off balance. I mean, and, I, and, I, and that's, they're deliberately doing that. They, they've made the choice. They want to put the Doctor in a situation he's not comfortable. And a domestic situation is somewhere he's not comfortable. So it, it's a choice they've made. But I love the Doctor free. And so for me, yeah, this, this story, but, but also just the, the tragedy of the war that's happening around him and just you know, leading to where we know is eventually going to end up in terms of being you know, regenerating. Um, but he's trying to be a good man around so much evil. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I just love that internal battle he's having. That's enough. And uh, seek out our episodes uh, that we spoke with John Dorney on uh, where we were talking about these uh, this story as well. So... Uh, John Dorney, we had two episodes of the Sirens of Audio with him, so so uh, check those out uh, if you haven't heard them already. Um, okay, so Ex Machina was also a Torchwood one that you really liked, um, but I'm going to move on. Yes. Callan, Callan, Volume 2. This was a highly, highly awaited box set by me because I loved the first Callan so much with Ben Miles playing the part that I went and bought. I'd never seen Callan before, so I, I sought out the DVDs, bought them, got into it. Uh, I haven't seen much of the colour series. I've seen all the monochrome, all the, they call it the monochrome years in the DVD box set. And I've seen all those, man, what a, what a character. Um, Edward Woodward is totally different to Ben Miles, but Ben Miles just plays the character of Callan in his, in his own original way. And I absolutely love it. Um, written by James Mitchell, uh, which is the, the, the son of the uh, original writer for the TV series. And, um, yeah, a, a solid set of stories. I probably probably didn't have the same impact that the first box set had for me, but still nothing to, to, to stick my nose up at. Yeah, I actually listened to all of box set one and two together because I hadn't listened to the first box set and you were raving about it. So I got the first set and this set and listened to all eight stories in one sitting and I enjoyed it. Like, very bleak and Cold War and... They, they really captured the mood well. Um, they're very, yeah, it was oh, good, good because stories. It had, and it also has Jane Slavin, who's, who's sort of another one of those actors who's in a lot of different uh, series in Big Finish. Yeah, does a lot with Tom Baker. She's in Dalek Universe coming up. 
so she plays a, a major character in Callan. Uh, Frank Skinner also is another person who's been in Doctor Who, the TV series, but also well known in the UK, not so not so well known over here. But he does a fantastic job as Lonely as well because the the um, Russell Hunter, who played Lonely in the TV series, was such a unique character. And I think that's that's the thing with Callan is that these characters were so unique. Yes, it was bleak, it was dark, but it was so, and that's what was good about it. It was different to everything else. Any other spy show you wanted to see that was big at the time was like Avengers, which was a little bit, you know, far fetched at times and a little bit silly. These took it deadly seriously. And I think that TV series, the original one, was often praised for being very much like how espionage really was. Uh, at the time. And um, yeah, the, the mental and emotional torture that Callan w- had to deal with, with his past experiences, now using them as a spy, really, really uh, a big part of the story, which is always brought out. And I, I just love Ben Miles. I've loved him since Coupling. So uh, he's uh, he's not just a funny comedy actor uh, that he was in that TV series. He's really something special. Um, so yeah, thumbs up for me from for, for Callan. So October, we had a couple of short stories. The first Big Finish short stories releases uh, in the Time Lord Victorious universe. So both performed by uh, John Coleshaw. One story featured John Coleshaw playing the Roger Delgado master. The other one featured him playing the Anthony Ainley master. And it just blew me away. It was fantastic to hear, particularly Roger Delgado's voice not his voice uh hearing someone uh portray him so well i i just i just love these two things at the time i was a little bit ambivalent about uh, about the the time lord victorious thing the whole multimedia arc thing but i have to confess that uh, in the last couple of weeks i've gone and uh read uh, read the novels as well uh so i've ordered the novels which <laughs> Well, the, the thing is with the post uh, in the UK at the moment, and I, I've actually been reading some ebooks. I thought, ah, forget it. I'll just get them on Kindle. So, um, yeah, I got the novels and read them straight away over a couple of days. Um, yeah, definitely the, the those two books uh, go well with time. Once you read the two books, all the parts of Time Lord Victoria start to click in because that first book, The Night, The Fool and the Dead, is kind of set straight after Waters of Mars. So then you get to sort of, get the 10th Doctor's motivations in particular. And and uh, then the second book is a multi-Doctor story with 8, 9 and 10. Really well done. Um, not mega novels like they were in the 90s, but um, but still but still really good, really good things. And uh, yes, I'm turning. I'm turning to multimedia now. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really liking. I'm, I'm even considering buying the graphic novels now. Uh, so um, yeah, th- these two short stories were our first tastes of big finishes uh, foray into the Time Lord Victorious. What did you think of them, Phil? I enjoyed them. The, the second one confused me a bit. and mm. I had to go back and listen to it again because I think I lost concentration. Um, I, I, I was on holidays at Port Stevens listening to that and my kids kept interrupting me and it threw me totally and I had to go back and listen again and it made a bit more sense that time. And I think before I knew what was going on with the Time Lord Victorious series, it was... Yeah, just diving in. But, yeah, John Coleshaw, what an amazing performer he is. I think that's so funny that you've ordered the books too, and I've just done it myself. Yeah, well, it's su- it's, you, it's sucked you, us I, in. I've got the hardback books coming, though. Did you just get the Kindle? Yeah. Oh, no. See, I, I'm getting the real physical books coming. I'm not just going Kindle. I'm, I'm doing it properly. Okay. No worries. <laughs> on, on my bookshelf. Let's go to more dust. <laughs> But speaking of Time Lord Victorious, also um, released was uh, a full one-hour instalment called He Kills Me, He Kills Me Not, which introduced a fantastic character called Brian the Ood featuring the Eighth Doctor. (laughs) Uh, A really, really good introduction story. Uh, The books, once you get the books, He Kills Me, He Kills Me Not will make a lot more sense. Okay. uh, As to where Brian the Ood is placed uh, because he kind of jumps around between doctors and it sort of goes into a bit more detail about that so yes the multimedia thing is sucking us in it's working i'm enjoying it really enjoying it actually um it's a so, western it, it, i mean this this story's actually got quite a bit of hate 
out there in the world, the fan world. No, they don't know what they're talking about. No, it, it is so funny. It's it's it, it's the gunfighters done <laughs> done with the Eighth Doctor and Brian the Ood. I guess it's the same people who hate the gunfighters. But yeah, Brian the Ood, the assassin. It, it's such a bizarre concept. Um, and it's just nice Doctor Who doing a Western. Mm. And Paul McGann gets to uh, do his sort of American sheriff voice. Yeah, he's, so he's, gr- he's great. Took me, it took me a moment. There was a few seconds there when I thought, who is this? Because he was doing such a good American accent. I, I hardly knew it was him. All right. The, uh, the monthly release for October was a fifth Doctor story, uh, Shadow of the Daleks Part 1, which comprised of four single episode stories. So with the promise of Part 2, you were thinking, well, there's going to be eight single episode stories. And I have to admit, after listening to Shadow of the Daleks Part 1, I was a little bit confused. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Did you feel the same? Yes. I mean, I, I was hoping for... <laughs> I, I was hoping that it, it would come together and make sense at the end, um, which the, the TV series doesn't always do. There's, there's not the same payoff. So I trusted the fact that... I knew John Dorney was running the last story, and I trusted there would be a payoff. It, it was interesting because, I mean, four stories, four different writers... The tone did change slightly between the writers um, because there's varying degrees of experience there. But, and, and it's the same cast in every story. And so just trying to get your head around two things. So one thing is enjoy the story as it is. And the second thing is how does this story fit in with the larger picture of what's going on? And why is the Doctor bumping to the same people in different characters over and over again? Um, so yeah, so this one, this and part two, next month's monthly release, eight stories, but John Dorney does manage to make it all make sense by the end. Um, and you do appreciate what's happened, but well, I mean, once again, the doctor just gets to be the doctor, which is good. I really feel for the rest of the cast who every episode were playing a different character, but the good thing is one of them set in Australia. Yay. So it's it nice getting a, a, a story set in the blue mountains in the first box set. Yeah, absolutely. It was great. Okay, so the Torchwood release for this month was uh, Three Monkeys. Really, uh, really fun release featuring Andy, who's featured a lot this year, and... uh, Owen Harper. Owen. Oh, that's right, Owen. Um, So this is a a really good one too. I mean, Torchwood, the Torchwood monthlies, I've been going back and listening to some other uh, after I did my own personal... uh, My own personal... Yeah, that's it. Uh, and the, the monthlies are consistently good. You, you, you can't really go too wrong with a Torchwood monthly. Uh, this is no exception. Uh, it's funny. It's completely scary at the same time. Uh, it's, it's great stuff. The two characters bounce off each other beautifully. Well, they're total opposites. You, you can't get... I mean, you can't get further apart than Owen and Andy. I mean, Owen is serious and straight and doesn't love, like anyone, doesn't like life. And Andy's just a flippity gibbet. And so putting the two of them together for a whole story where they've got to save the world, um, it's just hilarious because they just don't go together as people, but it works so well because they don't go together. Mm. Yeah. So that was a fun one. Uh, a couple of more box sets in October were released. We had uh, the Paternoster Gang Heritage 4 uh, with uh, another three stories. We spoke with Paul Morris about his story in a, in a recent episode. His story was called Merry Christmas, Mr. Jago. Oh, Dan Starkey and Christopher Benjamin together. Oh, that's just like a dream. It was. Uh, it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, it, you, can't, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with him. Fantastic story. Lots of, lots of humour. Uh, and the whole box set was, was just fantastic. I love that era. It's like it's set in the same similar, well, the same era as Jago and Lightfoot, but it's not Jago and Lightfoot. The same time. Oh, yeah, totally different. To- totally, totally differently. But but it was lovely having Jago there. I mean, I, I miss Jago and Lightfoot. I mean, yeah, we we can't get Lightfoot back again, um, which is the passing. But yeah, having Jago there is just yeah. A charm of Christopher Benjamin, what an actor, what a voice. Um, yeah, the more they can use him while while they can, the better. Absolutely. So the uh, the, the the other box set that uh, we want to talk about is the Warmaster Hearts of Darkness, 
which was released in October, and uh, a- another one where Der- Derek Jacoby. Uh, what can you say about Derek Jacoby? He's just brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and to have and to have him and, and the eighth doctor together on this set as well uh, is just a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but there is a twist in this at the end of the second episode, which I just hadn't seen coming, and yet was so blown away by. It was so exciting, and then I should have seen, and I should have seen it coming, and I suddenly realised how stupid I'd been to have missed this amazing twist and cliffhanger. Um, I saw it coming, and that's no, because I listened to it. I listened to it after, and you'd said there's a big twist. So I was uh, thinking, what's this twist going to be? And I thought, yeah, that's it, and I got it. So okay, so that made it spoiler. I was, I was proud. <laughs> I was proud of myself. You worked out well done. But what a what a what a wonderful story. And Derek Jacoby, I mean, uh, what an amazing actor. Fantastic. Let's move to November, uh, and let's talk about Shadow of the Daleks Part Two because this one, this uh, was the one that wrapped up the eight part. Shadow of the Dalek story. And by the end of it, it all made sense. And the payoff for me personally was so good that it, when you put the whole lot together, it's one of the standout releases of, of this year. I absolutely love this story. I don't know about you, but that, and it was interesting to hear that John Dorney wrote the final episode before everyone else. Uh, so the, we, everyone had the ending, everyone knew where it was going. Uh, I didn't know where it was going when I was listening, but when it, when we got to the ending and it all paid off, I thought it was just sensational. Typical, uh, typical John Dorney script. You can always count on a really nice surprise from John Dorney that's going to pay off in a very satisfying way. So that's uh, that's what I got from Shadow of the Daleks. What about you? Yeah, good release. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, my favorite Peter Davison release of the year was the other box set in this month. Um, so. We'll get to that in a moment. Why don't, we, why don't we talk about that? Wicked Sisters. Wicked Sisters. So, yeah. So, um, the Grace, I'm not, for those who, I don't know who people have been following the Grace, many years back, there was a trilogy of stories with Peter Davison um, on the Key Two Time series. And he had a companion made for him who was a tracer. You know how Tom Beckett and you know, Mary Town walked around with a plastic glowing stick that would beep, 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 beep. Um, well, it is, How'd it, it go? Is, How'd it go, Phil? Actually, it was, it's, it's more like the radiation rattles. <laughs> Anyhow, however it goes. Um, that's not my forte at all. Um, <laughs> in, the, in the audios, they decided to turn the trace into a person, which was um, called Amy originally, and then because they became a companion a doctor called Amy, they changed her name to another A word. I feel what it is now. She's, she's always still Amy to me. Um and then she had an evil, <laughs> evil sister, which was, I think, Zoe, um, Zara, Zara. And so those two had their own box set. There's, they did three box sets called Graceless, which are it's worth four, listening. I think. Is it four? Okay. I really worth, four. it could be. They're really worth listening to. I think they're fairly cheap at the moment too. Um, so they, they continue adventures. But here the, the doctor's on a mission. He's been told that they're dangerous and evil and they need to be wiped out. And so Leela, Leela comes to help the fifth doctor um, track, trace, and destroy these two characters. So it's a bit of an eth- a ethical dilemma there in terms of what's going on. Um, but the fact is, it's got Leela, it's got the Fifth Doctor, it's got the Grey Sisters, and just some pretty great adventures. Um, in some ways, it's, the two characters have very amazing powers. And so they have to keep finding ways to not let, let them be able to use their powers. But they managed to achieve that quite well. So... Yeah, that, that to me is my favorite Peter Davison. Just it's it's the perfect Dave, a perfect Fifth Doctor. He's vulnerable, but he has ideas and he cares. It's yeah, I think the the Doctor was just captured so well, and because it's a whole box set of stories, there's time for the Doctor to develop be the Doctor. So I did enjoy the, the other the two monthly releases, or all the all of these stories this year. But because they were very short, one episode, you know, you know, thirty minute episodes, or two twenty five minute episodes, it didn't feel like he had a chance to develop. In this, you actually got some character development, and the Doctor got to be the Doctor. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, another Time Lord Victorious CD was released, and that was a, a, a single disc release called en- the enemy of my enemy and uh i, I really liked this one because it, i would recommend this to anyone as a 
as a sort of a forerunner to the Daleks uh, uh, animations that were on YouTube and still are on YouTube uh, because I heard this before I'd seen the Daleks and there's characters within this like the, the, the Dalek time strategist and the, and the, uh, the executioner Dalek all with their different personalities shine through in this one. And this is where Nicholas Briggs really shows his skill as an actor, when he can bring all these different personalities out within the Daleks. And uh, yeah, I I thought it was great to be actually see the animated versions of these characters that had already been uh, portrayed on a big Finnish audio. I thought that was, that was fun. I, I, I'd probably have to watch the animation again to get a full uh, opinion on it, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it for, for, for this particular one. Yeah, I, it really showed Nicholas Briggs's ability and talents. I, I know that when Terry Nation created Davros, it was because his feeling was Daleks can't have a conversation because they're boring. And yet in this story, and then there's a couple of other ones coming up, where Nicholas Briggs is playing five, six, seven very different Daleks, different roles, different personalities, different voices, having conversations with himself. Um, you always knew which Dalek it was by the temperament, by the voice. It was, I, I, I don't know how one person did it. To me, you'd have to cast five people to play the five roles, but somehow he managed to do off all of them and have conversations. And the Daleks are evil. Like the ending of the story is just evil <laughs> anyhow really worth listening to i said i wasn't planning to get into the time lord victorious particularly but it really has captured me they sucked us in yeah it's good it's a good story too i like it, it. Is the whole the whole arc is is good and it really fleshes out once you get into those books and and the other media so yeah although you can just stick to the big finish i would certainly recommend uh getting into the other media as well for time lord victorious okay uh reese and yanto's Excellent barbecue was the uh, Torchwood release, and with a name like that, you can you can reckon it was a cracker. But let's talk about uh, the Tenth Doctor and River Song that was released in November with uh, with three episodes. Uh, you and I differed on our favourites from that one, but uh, you you really enjoyed that one, particularly uh, expiry dating the first episode on there, didn't you? I did. I mean, I'm a huge Alex Kingston fan, have been since her ER days, um, and so putting her with the Tenth Doctor. Um, filling in that gap. I mean, my view was always the fact that the Tenth Doctor would have met her again. Um, Because I think, yeah, I think, yeah. So all of the great expiry dating, I think just in terms of just being clever, I I love, I love it when Big Finish takes risks and expiry dating just being a series of correspondences back and forth was just a risky thing to do, but it pays off. But all three stories, I mean, I, I, yeah, I've listened to them all twice now and I have no doubt I'll be listening to them 10, 15, 20 times. Okay, yeah, so my favourite uh, story from that set was Ghosts. So I really enjoyed the, the Jonathan Morris uh, story, uh, a concept that's been done in fantasy, science fiction, horror before uh, with, a, with a special, unique Jonathan Morris and Doctor Who twist on it. Loved it. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was really happy with that. I, I, could sort of, I could sort of sense that it was done in a really rushed way. It was one of these early lockdown ones that they sort of rushed into production, but uh, yeah, really enjoyable at the same Anything with Alex Kingston is great. Uh, and you know what I think of David Tennant. No, I, I do like, <laughs> I do like the 10th doctor. I just think so. uh, okay. Let's move on to December. Uh, we can talk about the, uh, the first of the, of the monthly releases. And uh, that was Chris Chapman's story. He alluded to this setting when I spoke with him about, Scorched Earth. Uh, I interviewed him earlier in the year, uh, which you can hear that if you search back through our uh, our list of episodes. Flight of the Pimpernel was uh, a story that Colin Baker, or a, a period that Colin Baker wanted to be set in. I think originally he thought it was a, <laughs> he didn't realise it was a fictional world. Uh, thing, a fictional world, uh, but Chris Chapman found a way to put him in it anyway. Uh, and I thought it was really well done. I remember you mentioning to me, Philip, this is probably one of your favourite monthly releases for 2020. Uh, how does that how does that stand up now? Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a great one. Um, in fact, I had said along the way, Scorched Earth, but now I'm thinking about it. I think, oh, no, it might have been this one. Um, 
there. It's it was very entertaining. I once again I remember starting thinking I'm sure the the whole Pimpernel story was a novel, not actually real, and yet suddenly it was real. And then when it, the way he wove it together was very clever. So yeah, clever script. Um, the the sixth Doctor and eight and Perry getting on well. I love. And so the two of them just bounced off each other so well. And Perry's a strong, she's a strong character. She steps in, she saves the day on a couple of occasions. Um, she's actually a, a real force to be reckoned with. And so I, you know, I, I love she's the way they've developed that character so well. Fantastic. The next monthly that came out was a good one because we got to speak to the author, uh, Elizabeth Miles, and that was uh, The Grey Man of the Mountain set in uh, in Scotland, and but featuring uh, an appearance of the Brigadier with the Seventh Doctor and Ace. So that was that was a really nice listen uh, as the... Uh, and as we mentioned to um, Elizabeth, it was the last appearance of the Seventh Doctor in the monthly range on his own. Yep, it's, it's still a bit hard to take the fact that the monthly range is coming to an end and all these things are wrapping up. But it was it was a good yarn. It, it was you know, it's not one of the world shattering ones, but it's about relationships. And I think seeing you know, the, the Doctor and the Brig, you seeing uh, Ace and the, and the friendship she developed with the character. It, it was a it was a personal relational story. Um, yeah, set, set in Scotland, which was nice. Um, I kept expecting. I was kept waiting for the Yeti to turn up. They didn't. didn't. But um, the surprise that were there in terms of bit of bit of bit of timey wimey stuff in there. Um, Scottish Beast, it was, a, yeah, it was a good tale, good yarn. Absolutely. All right, you've probably got these stories. I have listened to these, but I didn't really absorb them as much as I should. The, the two Time Lord Victorious releases for this month, Mutually Assured Destruction by Lizzie Hopley and Genetics of the Daleks. So Mutually Assured Destruction is a uh, Eighth Doctor story, uh, which is described by Big Finish as... Uh, uh, as like a diehard in space. Uh, so, what are your what are your thoughts on those two Time Lord Victorious outings? Um, the Mutual Short Destruction does not let up at all. It is just go to woe the whole time. The Daleks are there. It, it's it's follows on from the one from last month. There's there's been a something's happened in between, which I, I don't know whether it's a graphic novel or what it is. Um, but there's obviously been a story in between. But it's just the Daleks at their most ruthless, the Doctor trying to stop them. It's just, yeah, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. It, it, it doesn't, the pace doesn't let up at all. So if, if you're after a really fast paced action adventure, that's for you. Um, Genesis of the Daleks actually is fairly similar too in terms of pace. Um, this is probably one of my favorite Tom Bakers of the year. Um, once again, I, I don't really quite understand how it fits into the whole um, Tunnel of Victoria series. I haven't put, put all the pieces together yet. I'm looking forward to you know getting the books and you know, and piecing it all together more. Um, but yeah, it's just a good quality. Um, there's flashes back to Genesis of the Daleks, but it's Tom Baker, the Fourth Doctor, being the Fourth Doctor, um, enigmatic, dangerous yet amusing. Um, yeah, well, well worth listening to. So tell us uh, what you think about the Robots Volume 3. That was released in December as well. And we didn't quite have a meeting of uh, the, the, the main cast with Paul and Toos. They what surprised me. No, but they, they know they exist now. So the, yeah. the, main, the main cast are name checking and investigating. Um, so there is, a, once again, it's a, basically a Paul and Toos story by themselves which is a murder mystery and there's some big shocks during the course of that story, which once again, I'm surprised by, and which is why I'm really glad um, Paul will be in the, the next one because you can see what they're building towards. Um, it's, it is quite tragic that David Collins has passed away. Um, so yeah, great actor and yeah, more stories to tell. Um, certainly this one is interesting because you could feel the tension ramping up in terms of the politics and the situation, and in my head, we had one more box set to go, and by the end of that, had to be the conclusion, which links with Ravenous, where the, the TARDIS arrives and, and Livchenko rushes in, 
and something's you know, she's escaping from something, but we don't know what. But now we know there's at least another two box sets. Thinking, well, actually, that might slow the pace down. Don't know. But yeah, the, the cast is superb. The acting, the world building, um, the way they've just established this world. Caldor, I just feel like I know, um, which is just bizarre because it's all based on one Doctor Who story from the 1970s set on Sandminder. But there's been so much around Caldor with the other series as well that it, it, it just feel, it feels like a place I understand and know. Yeah, and I'm remembering the cliffhanger now. It's just coming to me. And I've, I've been thinking all the way through the robot series, oh, this is really good. It's not crossing over with Caldor City, the other series that's not Big Finish related, um, that I absolutely adore. So it's not going to cross over. But with the cliffhanger, I'm starting to think, oh, is there some kind of a crossover? Uh, and I hope, it's, I hope it's treated well enough that uh, it doesn't kind of detract from the other Caldor City series. Because uh, it is a pretty intense cliffhanger that we've got on this one. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so have you had a chance to hear The Crown yet? That's the Torchwood. I haven't heard it yet myself. I have. I, I love the fact that the year began to finish with Queen Victoria. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, she's a fascinating character. Um, the, the Crown's a bit interesting because Rowena Cooper's there, but you're not 100% sure is it really Queen Victoria or is, is, is she someone else? And so it's a, a real puzzle there. But bit by bit, you realise that um, there's some very clever manipulation and there's a, another great twist at the end, which uh, got me. So it was good. I, I like Excellent. being got. I'm looking forward to that one. Mm. So the last couple of releases for the year were, were short trips. The Shattered Hourglass was the last sort of regular short trips release. Uh, which is an interesting one. I don't know if you've had a chance to to hear that one, but uh, from I, I next year, actually. yeah, from next year, the short trips are going to be, there's going to be less of them. It's only going to be six and uh, they're going to be released around September, I think in a box set. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, no more, no more monthly short trips. I'm afraid. Mm, okay. I, I missed that bit of news. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Paul Sprague Writing Opportunity winner uh, was uh, published as their uh, finished short trip. What a what a thrill that would have been uh, for Eugenie. I can't pronounce the surname. Sorry, I'm not going to try. Australian Australian writer, uh, based uh, from what I hear on the extra base, she's based in Canberra, so uh, nice and close to us. So that's very good. Um, I haven't had a chance to. I know what the premise of the story is, so it's a really interesting sounding story. Uh, I hope this Paul Sprague writing opportunity continues because uh, I was inspired by all the talk about it so much so that I wrote one myself. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> and you actually read it, Philip. So there. I have read it. <laughs> it was pretty good. Thanks. That's that's high praise. That's high praise. <laughs> it is from me. So that was an overview of the releases uh, of Big Fish is not exhaustive, that's for sure. There were still quite a few releases we didn't mention or only had a passing mention. But if there was a standout for you in terms of Doctor Who, let's just go Doctor Who, uh, what would it be for you, Philip? I can't do one. Um, so the, the one... Okay, give me, <laughs> give, me, give me the standout for you for the monthlies. Uh, standout for me for the monthlies, I think I'll still go Scorched Earth, though Plath of the Plinth Panels would be close. Um, so written be, by the same writer anyway, so yeah, I know. Is uh, yes, that's accidental, that's not deliberate, but um, yeah, I, the, both those captured my imagination a lot. And I think there's, I mean, I, I love being able to talk, we haven't talked a lot in terms of the depth and the character development and also the undercoming themes much. We you know, have a chance to <laughs> long enough as these, but um, both those had some very deep themes, I thought. But, I mean, they're very different styles because, I mean, Plus the Plymouth was much more lighthearted, easygoing. But there's, in terms of the whole period of history, it was a very bleak time. So, yeah, I, I love the histo his history historicals. I, I don't know why the show doesn't do, do more because, to me, that's always captured me most. So that would be the monthly one. Uh, Tenth Doctor River captured me a lot. Sixth Doctor and Perry I adored. Um... I just, I'm a positive person, Dwayne. It's hard to really read a, to not find good things in, in lots of it. So, yeah. Well, what about you? What, what, uh, what's what's but, that, that for you? Oh, sorry. Oh, but for me, definitely mm. the monthly release for me would be Cry the Vultress. 
Um, it's uh, for all the things that I've already mentioned uh, earlier on. That would definitely be uh, the one for me. Other standouts for me would be, as far as Torchwood goes, it's definitely tropical seascapes. Uh, that would be that would be the one. It's the one that's responsible for getting me back into Torchwood. So thank you, um, Susan's War, absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, the lives of Captain Jack and 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 Donna Noble kidnapped. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> those those have really stood out to me too. So I often see Time War Time War Four. I mean, that was just wonderful. Yeah, it, it's part of that big Time War arc. I, I don't do too well with with massive arcs uh, that I've got to try and keep up with. Uh, you know, it's that problem of being a completist. You want to know everything, uh, and if you can't know everything, you don't want to know anything. I don't know, uh, but yeah, that, I mean, it was certainly a good uh, a good one as well. But uh, those are the ones that uh, that stood out for me. And of course, we can't go past the the human frontier as big finish originals. I hope they keep going. They, they were doing Big Finish Originals as a celebration of 20 years uh, for Big Finish. Yeah, and, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I, Ad, I certainly... Ad, Ad, Ad Girl was one of those Big Finish Originals too. I, I, th there wasn't a Big Finish Original that they d released that I didn't think was great. They, they were, there were Shillings and Sixpence. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what they all were. The, um, oh, the, the fantastic one... Um, I can't think it was called. The, 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 she was a psychologist. Um, played by <laughs> River Song actress. Oh, oh Transference. Transference. Um, <laughs> I mean, all those Big Finish originals were so good. I, I, I don't know whether they sold enough for them to keep going on, but yeah, you know, I, I do keep hoping that you know, people keep buying the quality stuff because it's it's there. So oh, I mean, any, any mm. anyone who likes these limited series on Netflix, you know, I, I often like the UK. Uh, police dramas or mysteries that they have to solve in eight episodes. Well, that's like transference. Yep. Um, uh, limited series all tied up. Or is it? Or is it? It ends on a kind of a cliffhanger, doesn't it? it well, yeah. I mean, you can easily go in another series, definitely. Mm. So for those so, of you who love the other facts, 97, I worked out with the things I typed in for my spreadsheet, 97 releases. Uh, in terms of the main stuff. And those, some of those releases had multiples inside them. Um, most prolific director was Scott Hancock, uh, closely followed by Nicholas Briggs. Um, so, yeah, just, I think we need to keep, yeah, part, part of what we love doing here, Sounds of Audio, is keep talking to people about their work and what they do, because these productions that are being released, there's so many people involved in them, so much work goes into them, and so much love. Because I think the thing that stands out is that these people love what they're doing. And, yeah, it makes us love them too. I think a couple of other standouts too. You'd have to, uh, you'd have to go with Kat Armitage for debut writer. Uh, she's a standout for us, uh, mainly because she talked to us, but also because her story is darn good. Yep, and, uh, and, so and pre-empting pre, pre isolation and lockdown. Yeah, Cause, that's right. Because the story really is a perfect lockdown story. Yep, and you can't go past the the music and sound design guys as well. Uh, some names that come to mind: uh, Howard Carter, uh, Howard Carter, who did uh, uh, first Doctor box set, uh, Return to Scarra. That was probably probably my favourite sound design for 2020. That would be Return to Scarra. Uh, I don't know if you disagree with me or agree with me. No, he's got uh, uh, ben, see Benji Clifford. I want to say with a lot of the Time War stuff he's doing. Mm. Um, he really captures so much. Um, it, it, it's, he does so much stuff in the background. There's a, there a cup of tea. I can't remember what the release was, but there was this whole tea thing going on. And actually, I, I lost the dialogue because I started listening to the soundscape of just listening to this teaspoon going around the cup, tapping on the cup, being put on the side. And there's this beautiful soundscape of this cup of tea being made that I then had to go back and listen to the dialogue because I'd stopped listening to the dialogue because there was a whole story about you know, the kettle being put on and boiling and bubbling and every bit of sound was there. It was extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, so a couple of other guys too um, that I haven't mentioned. Steve Foxen would be another one. Yep. Um, Joe Kramer as well, who I love listening to Joe Kramer talk about his music because he is a Hollywood star. 
uh, he's done music for some of the for he, he's worked for Tom Cruise for goodness sake. Uh, in fact, I watched a, one of his movies uh, only a few weeks ago. Jack Reacher, I hadn't seen it before, and did Joe Kramer's name came up on the credits. So I went, oh, that's right, he did Jack Reacher. But his labour of love is Doctor Who and the Doctor Who universe. He's he's uh, his work on things like Paternoster Gang, and I think he does Missy as well. Uh, really, really cool, really cool stuff. Mm. Yeah. So 2020, it may have been a bad year for many, but it was certainly a good year for uh, the output of Big Finish. It was a very exciting year. Uh, but I think even after so many years, Big Finish has been going, the best is still yet to come. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's so much. Yeah, Masterful's just been released, and I've loved that. And there's, yeah, looking, looking at what's coming in the future, there's so much stuff I'm excited by. Beautiful. So thanks so much, uh, Philip. It's been a long one. It has. It's been a, it's been a good one. And uh, we'll be back soon to uh, to talk more. I think we're going to talk about the next monthly uh, on the next episode. So <clears throat> uh, depending on that, on when that's released, uh, we have something very special coming up for episode 42 of the Sirens of Audio. Uh, so next episode being 41, if... Um, Colony of Fear, which is the next monthly release, hasn't been released yet. Uh, there may be a slight delay on that, but we will get it out to you as soon as possible. Our episodes drop on, on uh, Thursdays normally, but bear with us if uh, there is a slight delay. It will only be this once, I promise. Uh, but I have to line it up with episode 42, and we'll find out why when we do it. So uh, thanks very much, Philip. Good to talk to you. It's been great going racing with you on Apple Podcasts and all those sort of things that you need to do the more we get seen the better very good i'm gonna i'm gonna record an outro later that's fine i'm tired <laughs> yeah you sound like you're losing it i, I don't want to do my uh screen everyone's just slow for me.